Well, welcome everybody. Jose J. Garcia, real estate investor, coach, and mentor here. Coffee and mobile home investing with me. So the point of this call, and this is only our second one, no Zoom trouble this morning. That's already a beautiful thing. So glad we got that squared away. But uh, the point of this call is we, we will get into coaching and deals and really any and everything mobile home related. And this is not just for myself. What I'm trying to get is more and more people to come on here. As a matter of fact, for next week, I'd like somebody else to come in and present a deal if you like. Maybe present an investment, an opportunity, maybe something you invested in. Maybe the best thing came out of it, the worst thing came out, because, you know, with real estate and or mobile home investing, we have a little of both. That is what it is, right? You learn from and you keep on going. So that's what we do. But we awesome. meet some people on here. If you have a question, you want to drop a comment, check the chat box as well. Let's see here. And again, this is just for networking. So you are not interrupting me at any point. I was going to show you our latest deal that we did. That's what I wanted to make this call about. Um, and again, if you have a deal, you think you have a deal, you'd like to bring one on here, let's talk about it. That's what we're on here for is to network, right? That's what we're trying to do. So, so let's jump on here. I'll go ahead and present what I want to talk about today. And the reason behind it. <clears throat> All right, I should be presenting. <clears throat> so why do we show you some of these deals? Because every week, most likely, we'll have one deal that we want to present to you, whether it's one of ours, is one of our students, an investor, a partner, whatever it may be. Okay, the goal, we're not here to brag about our deal. In a way, we are. But for the good, for the right reasons, right? Because everybody can acquire these same type of results and all you can invest in mobile homes. <laughs> mobile homes are for everyone. Mobile homes are what I consider to be hidden side to real estate that a lot of people still don't know about. Now, it's definitely growing. You know, seven years ago when I got started, it was very alien to everybody. It was French speaking when I spoke about mobile homes. Nobody really cared for it. And the people that didn't know about it, just blah. Today, there's a wholesaler, bird dog, flipper, et cetera, et cetera, in every street corner, right? They're growing. And I guess I helped to that by coaching people. But that's a good thing. That gives us more room to network, more room to see. When I see somebody investing in mobile homes, I don't see them as competition. I see them as somebody else I can network with because I'm sure if you watch some of our videos on here, you've heard me say, is it possible that they may have a deal that you may want and vice versa? So instead of seeing somebody who's doing the same thing as a, as a competition, see them as somebody who can take a deal from you. Maybe somebody you can wholesale to, flip a mobile home too. You never know, right? So, all right. So this specific home is a... Three bedroom, two bed, single wide. I'll show you some of these pictures. Now you'll notice something different about this one that we typically don't do. And that's furnish them. Every now and then, yes, we will put a fridge, a stove and kind of leave it at that, right? But when it comes to couches and TVs and lamps and coffee tables, et cetera, I mean, this is really truly a move in ready type of home, right? Well, it's supposed to be. And that's what we're gonna talk about, right? Mobile homes and look, when I compare mobile homes to real estate, it is not mobile homes are better. That's not what I'm saying. Invest in everything. If you're investing in real estate, invest in mobile homes just to create that one more passive income, right? Create that wealth. You have to have multiple streams of income, so don't limit yourself. When I compare, I'm also just trying to make a difference of to show you how many more opportunities you can have. And with mobile homes, you know, when you think about exit strategies with uh, real estate is how many do you have available? Okay. At the end of this presentation, I'll go down the list, the majority of what you can do with mobile homes, but are not limited to, and I'll let you insight on a couple of little things coming in the very near future, January, okay? So this one here, three bedroom, two bath, we took the mobile home, if this is inside of a community park, by the way, okay? Now, when you think exit strategies, one exit strategy does not work in every community, in every market, and not all exit strategies work in every markets. So you have to know your numbers. You have to know your num your markets. That's what I mean by what is your markets. Too often I ask an investor, right? They're talking about investing in a specific mobile home, whether single wide, double wide, and hey, I'm looking to pay this amount. And the, immediately I stop them and try to ask for numbers because that's what makes sense. Unless you're buying a mobile home for yourself to live in it and you just love the area, you love the mobile home and you can't wait to live in it, then it doesn't really matter what it costs, really, because you, you want it anyway. But if you're buying it for an investment, then the numbers have to check out each and every time or it's not a good investment. One thing I see too often from new investors coming in, especially is forcing a deal. Well, I don't know that I'm going to find another one. So let me go ahead and try to make this one work. 
typically it does not work, right? You end up spending over budgeting over, I mean, it just is a disaster. And when you work under pressure, you typically don't do very well anyway. That is statistics to show, right? So, okay. So this one here, it met every number in the market. So the numbers real quick, what do I mean by the markets? Okay. What is the rental rates in the area? You need to know that. What is the rental rates in the area? You need to have an idea of that. What is the lot rents if it's in a community park? You need to know that. Now, just because one mobile home park may be right beside each other and we have parks like the one we've seen where there's literally a fence and you have one park on the left side and one on the right side, it does not mean they're equal to. One may provide multiple amenities, which means the park probably charges a lot more for rent than the other one on the other side. And I have seen something like that where it is a decent difference, two, three hundred dollars worth of difference, right? So you have to know that. What is the lot rent in the area? What does it provide? That's questions that you should be asking when you call the park managers, park owners anyway, is what is the lot rent, right? What does it include? Water, sewage, trash, et cetera? Nothing, just the land. I have to get uh, public of water, et cetera. So you need to know these numbers. And then what is ARVs, after repair values in an area? What is a move-in ready mobile home selling for in this area? And comp equally. You cannot comp a double wide to your two bedroom, one bath, single wide. That's not equally. That's, a, that's double the size and double the size of the home. So it wouldn't make sense, right? What has sold in the past 30, 60, 90 days? I want to know. Now, with, with mobile homes, if you already invested in it, you probably already know that we do not have the luxury like real estate. There is no Zillow. There is no truly FMLS, MLS, et cetera, et cetera, right? And you will find them in there from time to time. You'll find mobile homes, but those are typically homes that are outside of parks, maybe maybe even have land with them, all kinds of different stuff. That's not what we're investing in. We are investing in mobile homes inside of community parks. We're taking de-stressed mobile homes that are in a community park, run down, beat down, fixer uppers, all kinds of names. We make them beautiful again, livable, presentable, and we put them on the market, okay? Let me start breaking down these, okay? I'll show you some of these pictures that we did. Very happy with the turnout on this one. So yes, this was fully furnished, okay? Beds, lamps, I mean, everything. This is a short-term rental is what we're doing. And that's what we're gonna show you on here, okay? I did not do this, by the way. I invested, but I am not a designer by any means. I am quite shocked and yes, I would live here. <laughs> so the partner of mine who did it, him and his wife, she is phenomenal. She is the one who came in and designed it. So. Hoping she does this to my house as well, because we could use it. So, and again, washer dryer. See, it's the one of many things that we do not provide. You know, when we're doing a flip or even a rental, we don't do rentals anymore. We have not done in a while, even though I have started <laughs> again. Uh, it is certain things that I will not provide. And the reason behind it is more so, okay. Downside to renting, okay? Everything has a positive and, and a negative. When you rent homes, and this is something that we experience a bit more times that I like to talk about, when you evict somebody or they move out, somehow the stove, the fridge always came out missing, but nobody knew what happened. Okay, we'll leave that one there. I got tired of replacing a stove and a fridge and a stove. And again, repeatedly, so I thought, okay, you know what? Most apartments is getting to a point in our areas anyway where they're not providing that. And maybe that's the same reason why people take these things with them. Can't really bolt them down, right? So we, we quit providing them. Now, when we got the rent, the owns flipping them and selling mobile homes, we started again kind of providing these here and there and where we could. And it really meant more so was it within budget. If it made sense in the number sense, we went ahead and provided. But what we started noticing really quickly was that people didn't like them. Oh, that's too cheap. Oh, that's too old. Nothing wrong with the stoves. Most of what we got was refurbished, right? Stoves, fridges, you know, they got places all over, all over, I'm sure, where they kind of refurbish them. They make them work. Some even have warranties on them and they do good. They work right but people don't like them. It's as simple as I don't like the way it looks and that's plenty fine. So we, we quit doing that again. It was just a plus to us really. So, but again, on this one here, yes, you see everything that is provided, couches, uh, tables, uh, coffee tables, chairs, it, everything is made because it is a short-term rental. So let's get into that. And Instagram, if you have a comment, the way just drop it on there, I am paying attention to you as well. But okay, let's talk about exit strategies, investments, and most importantly, numbers, because that's what makes sense, right? 
the numbers must make sense. Do not force a deal. Okay. That is a beginner tactic that you're trying to, you think you need is the last deal you will ever forever run into. And I just have to make it work. Typically it does not. And then you're into a deal, a mess of a deal. You're over budgeting. You're not meeting your numbers. And for you to get your returns on your investment, ROIs, you're talking years to come. That's real estate. That's not mobile homes. And that's not what we do. If it works for you, have at it. Think strategically, okay? You have to think smart and use your brain, not your heart when you're investing in mobile homes. Oh, the trailer trash. Oh, the stigma. You can look at that as a night and negative or a positive, whichever way you want. I see it as in a way it keeps a lot of people from getting into. Maybe it's not overcrowded yet for that reason. It doesn't really matter. But you have to think again, does it make sense to invest in this because of the numbers, right? If you've seen it as something more as to, well, I don't think that I would live here. I just don't like it. Yet again, you're thinking with your heart and you're not going to invest wisely that way. Okay. So this one here, single by three bedroom, two bath. We bought it for, it was right under 5K and we actually saw the seller owned owe the bank. All she wanted was to be out. She was moving out of state, didn't care for it. She just wanted to be out of it. She did not want it to affect her credit. So she was willing to hand us a title immediately if we just cut her out a check and she was done with it. We connected with the bank. We went directly through. That's I can make a whole nother coaching on that. No, do not just get people checks and expect them to go pay. I'm not saying she wouldn't, but it can get tricky on something like that, right? And that goes the same for taxes and lot rents and I'll give me the money and I'll go pay it. Question mark, right? So we connected with the bank and we paid it off. Paid it off immediately. And within about the 18 days, I think it took, we had the title. So we had the title, we had already done a bill of sale with her, completed a transaction, all we were waiting was on that title, of course, that a lot of people call the deed, it's not a deed, it's a title, much like a vehicle. And we were done, we were done with her, she was happy, we were happy, we took the investment at the time, we were not thinking Airbnb, that's what we're going to get into. We were thinking more so just one more flip that we can do, okay, um, invested about 2000 rehab material, the home needed really nothing, it was just a lot of little touch up just typical wear and tear carpets here and there where you walk through with shoes you shouldn't that's my thing not maybe not y'all's uh walls if you had scratches you know just from uh, maybe children just writing on it here and there nothing was wrong with it it was just again it was more so of a touch up bring it up and make it livable and get it that much more for what we had had it for the year to make the model i mean we got a good deal to say the least right holden which includes utilities and insurance we were under 500 now insurance is ongoing of course because it is technically a rental protect your assets right you have to this tree may decide to fall on and you don't have insurance then what no, you no longer have an airbnb and you don't have much of a home left okay so make sure you protect your assets but yes the holding utilities insurance for during the investment right we were under 500 Getting Airbnb ready, this was after the fact, once we decided, well, let's not just, because we did list it actually. We listed it as an RTO and had it ready on the market. A few interest, a few people trying to put less of a down payment than what we accepted. So it kind of set around. That's when I was approached by a business investor partner of mine who does specializes in Airbnb. And he said, well, why don't we do Airbnb with it? He does a lot of campers. He does beautiful, phenomenal stuff. I may have him on a call on here later on, okay? So have at it. Well, let's do it. I'll put the investment. I'll buy all the stuff that is needed. We'll put it together and let's see what it does, right? I want to try it because Airbnb is something that I've been wanting to get into for a while. Now, already while I'm talking about this, you know, you think of exit strategies. How many exit strategies can you do with real estate? How many exit strategies can you do with mobile homes? a lot more than you can with real estate. And here's just that one more that you can. And when you're thinking about Airbnb or short rentals, uh, I would definitely say don't do individual nightly rentals. You don't want to do that. But it's something that, reminder, you have to go to the park management park office, okay? That is something that they have to approve. So I'm giving you heads up in advance. Don't think you can come in and just, uh, well, I'm going to make this Airbnb. Well, you might want to check with the park management first, okay? So we spent about 3000 on the remodel of bringing all the furniture, everything that it needed, all into investment. We were around 10500 which is a bit more than what I'm typical investing in right but again you got a whole different type of basic strategy happening here this is a long-term investment and not a quick flip and go when you're thinking about this and you're thinking about the numbers again you are thinking how soon can i get my money back because that's what roi is returns on your investment and in mobile homes we like to get our money back immediately or within the first six months that's always been a rule 
Now, the market is a little different right now. I think COVID has something to do with it. I don't know. But again, you know, it is a quick that you get your money back and you keep investing. Okay. Anybody want to comment and raise your hand? You know, I can keep talking forever by all means. So mobile home exit strategies. We'll go back to that picture in a second. Okay. So, and these are only a few of the many. <clears throat> I, I could write a couple other pages on here and I did not even list Air, a Airbnb on here, but you have the traditional one. People are getting started. You start with what? Wholesale. I don't have any money. I don't have any means of getting started. Nobody to borrow money, no credit cards, et cetera, et cetera. I call those excuses, by the way. But you can't start with wholesale, right? Which means you take a property, you put it on a contract. You don't really buy it. You may need to put a little deposit, whether it's $100, $500. I wouldn't go $500. I don't typically put any, by the way. I'll keep it at that. And then you wholesale it. So you do A to B, A the seller to you be and you be to a new buyer and you make money that way you eventually build your cap and pocket you your money you build your uh, capital and you start investing other ways you don't have to you can stick to wholesale forever then you have bird dogging right which is nothing more than a connector pay of your time some people say look i can find you a deal i'm not putting it on the contract i'm not going through all the legality i don't i don't understand it i don't really care can i just bring you a deal and you just pay me a referral or something absolutely and you can do that, but you are leaving money on the table. If you're doing bird dog after a while, I will say you need to go ahead and transition into wholesale. It is not that hard to do agreements. I, we coach you on here, by the way, to do something like that. And it just makes you money because you're actually flipping the property in a way, right? Something that you never bought, you have full control of, and you should be doing. Then you have the rentals, whether it's short term, long term, I guess I can add Airbnb into that. Fix and flip, you come in, you fix it, rehab it, put it back on the market and you sell it, okay? Fix and flip with finance. So now you want to be a bank. You want to provide finance into people buying. One thing to remember about is we are providing affordability housing. Most people don't have 20, 25,000 in their back pocket to give you, or they probably put it as a down payment elsewhere. So therefore you may have the finance. That's not the end of the world. That's just one more opportunity that you can offer. Other people may not be able to. Sell the mobile home and create a note. You can do that. Hey, later on, sell the notes if you don't want to. I don't want to deal with this little check every month is coming in um you like it but it's kind of annoying me uh sell the note right sell and transport so then you have here's one exit strategy that you cannot do with a house i know i've seen somewhere on tv somewhere that they were moving a house i think from one state to the other people just had to have that house okay well you can i guess when in mobile homes that's what a mobile home is supposed to be mobile you can move it from point A, B, C and continue to move it around as much as you want. There is an expense quickly on that, you know, to move a single wire from point A to point B in a 50 mile radius, you're talking two, 3,000. I'm just giving you an idea. If you move a house from point A to point B, 50 mile radius, I assure, I assure you it's not gonna be $3,000, okay? Sell and assist park owners. You know, many of you are wondering, well, how can I get into mobile home investing? Where can I start? You know, if you drive through any mobile home park, which you should, trying to get an idea of at least figure out what a mobile home is, right? You're going to notice that almost every park or nine out of 10 parks have empty pads, meaning that you see mobile homes on certain pads that are sitting and certain pads don't have a mobile home. Why is that? Well, it either at one point got demoed, it got moved out of there, or there was never one brought in, right? Which means there's an empty pad there that you can bring a mobile home into them for them. Could you possibly find somebody selling a mobile home, okay, that you could put on a contract and then maybe, hey, Mr. Park owner or park manager, I have a mobile home you may be interested because I noticed your pad between three and four that is empty. I'm sure you're looking to make money off of that pad as well. Can't be making anything with it being vacant, right? I have a mobile home I can sell you for X amount. Wholesale it to them. One more opportunity. Many, many, right? uh buy sell mobile homes with real estate packages this is something that i'm working with a couple of people actually on something that we're getting more into as well i've done a couple phenomenal this is more so where you create mobile homes into real estate okay so big misconception all mobile homes depreciate i don't want to get into mobile homes because they depreciate as soon as you pull them out of the lot yes and no okay much like a vehicle car boat motorcycle yes as soon as you pull them out of that lot it depreciates in value and continues to do so until it is worth in in a book nothing here's my thing i've always said to something like that and let me use this one as an example do you think i care 
how much this mobile home is valued in a book somewhere. Oh, it's only valued at 4,000 now or 7,000 or $200. If it's making me, and I haven't even gotten into Airbnb numbers, but if it's making me 700 per se, if it was a rental a month, do I really care what the value of the mobile home is? Okay, so that's a little insight for you. Now, when you're creating mobile homes and land packages, you can do a search, certain thing called the title, which means you take whether it's a single white or a double white and you detitle the mobile home to the land, you create it real estate, and in fact, it will actually appreciate. You can comp it with other real estate and the value goes up versus down like again, the stigma and the myth and et cetera that goes on. Now, again, they're not wrong, but it's all how you structure it, right? So there's, that's something that you can create, land packages. Then you can create a park like that are not building new parks. They are not allowing new parks to be built in the wonderful world of America at this time. But it does not mean that you cannot find multiple individual parcels, pieces of real estate and put a bunch of mobile homes, rent them out, do whatever you want, right? Sure. Uh, plan is on, by the way. We'll talk about that in another video. You can't have, you do have to be approved. All right. So again, these are only to name a few. We have the Airbnb, which I'm going to get into numbers here in a second, slightly. Okay. And you can go visit the Airbnb, by the way. I'll drop a link on the video. Y'all go happy to go see the actual listing that we have on it. But there's many more exit strategies there are within mobile homes. And much like anything, it's always about getting creative. Be creative. Think, right? Come January, I'm going to introduce two new exit strategies never before done in mobile homes uh, that I'm going to introduce to the mobile home investing world. So stay tuned for that. That'll be January before those come around. We are playing around with those a couple a little bit. I like the way they're checking out. So definitely want to introduce them to y'all. Any comments, suggest things, anybody want to talk, please unmute yourself. All right, the home, so this Airbnb, we listed it uh, about a week ago. Everything was done, finalized, put on the market, and I was eager. I want to see what it does. Because again, you know, when you're thinking about Airbnb, and I've stayed at many, by the way, so it's one of those things. If you are getting into Airbnb, uh, investing-wise, go stay in a couple Airbnbs. Get an idea of, of what it is that people are doing. I mean, you can study the Airbnb all day long, see pictures, that sort of thing, but actually go stay somewhere and see what they're doing because that's something that you can do on your own, right? One way of learning. So after the first week, immediately four days, it was booked. Four days it was booked, and then one week in January has already been booked. And as of yesterday, 25 days of December, by one family just got booked. That's a whole month. But it looks a lot better in those 25 days than it does in 30 days as a rent to own or rental. I can tell you that. The numbers, wow, very impressed with them. So, so far, as it starts out, yes, this is an exit strategy that I would recommend to all of you. If the park allows it, if the park manager owner is okay with and you are <clears throat> able to do Airbnb, jump on it. It is something that I highly suggest to any and everybody. Anybody have any comments, suggestions? Um, question, where is this one located? Do you know, good morning. Uh, Albany, Albany, Albany Georgia. Oh, okay, okay, that's the one, I thought so, okay. Yeah. And, and um, I'd like to take the mic for, oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Okay, I'd like to take the mic for a, a couple of minutes, just to let it, everybody here know if um, anyone is looking for a, um, turnkey deal that already has a renter in it, i.e. you want to buy a cash flowing property, you know, come see me because um, I've got one ready right now. And also too, I've got another project that uh, will be done soon. And this is turnkey. It's not furnished like what Jose has here, but um, these are both in the uh, Macon Warner Robins area. So if anyone wants to, you know, have a deal that's already done, and don't have to worry about contractors, don't have to worry about finding a home or et cetera, you know, come see me. Also too, if you'd like to JV on something with me as well, come see me as well. And if you're into land, I also do land. I've um, got some land um, in Mineola, Texas. I've got 10 lots and these are um, already uh, zoned for residential mobile home lots. And I can also find land in different parts of Georgia and the country if you want to do a land home package. So just see me. Um, um, 
I can, there's, since there's only people here, my name is Dino Sims, Dino at DinoSims.com. I'll give you my number, 404-553-6836. And if you've got a deal, um, let's network. Absolutely. That was it. Uh I will list that on the YouTube video as well when we post it on all the social media and YouTube as well, Dino. And quick reminder, I am, okay. waiting, I am waiting on my three parcels of real estate. So I'm hoping you're coming around for those. <laughs> oh, yes, 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 of course. You, you I'm, I'm uh, working a lot of stuff. Good deal, good deal. A lot of stuff. Awesome. So see, just like Dina on here, I mean, do not be shy, scared to speak up. Anything you want to talk about, that's what we're on here. We can all help each other. The real estate world investing is huge and it's huge because everybody networks with everybody one way or another so the same thing we're trying to do on here with mobile homes is we have the same concept let's grow it let's be here for each other kind of thing right uh presentation wise i'm done we're near down 10 30 you know we're trying to make this a 10 30 call so let me go ahead and advertise a couple of things if you do have anything you want to talk about real quick drop it on the comments and i will open the floor for you if I can get the comments, there's the comments. Okay. Tomorrow night, don't forget the uh, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We have the actual coaching call. Uh, topic wise, I don't have that pad with me. So go check out our social media. But 8 p.m., same thing on a Zoom call on here. We'll be live and we'll be talking on an actual coaching call, 30 minutes. Tuesday, don't forget, let's do deals. We have that coming up. Now, here, let me add that to it real quick. And I don't know if I have that page open i do not but i'm going to open it real quick for y'all so some of you are asking as to okay so these are good deals uh the numbers check out etc but my hardest thing is how can i get a mobile home deal that it checks out and i'm able to come in and do something like this great question by the way because if you're overpaying for the mobile home already from the start you already put yourself at a deficiency right you're already overspending your budget's probably already crushing down so you have to start with the investment up now, here's one thing, okay? You cannot lower the cost of uh, the labor, the material, or you would be delivering a very poor product, meaning you can't possibly think it's going to Airbnb or rent for whatever rental rates in the area are going if you're delivering a poor product. So that being said is you have to put what it takes to invest in such, and the only number that can come down is the cost of the mobile home. Put this on the side. There we are. That is the only number that it can come down, okay? So whether you have to negotiate with the park owner, park manager, or direct seller, those are the three sellers in mobile, home, mobile homes, by the way, then that's what you have to do. You have to make the numbers work and start out with the cost of the home, and then from there you move forward. Tuesday, let's do deals. That's where we present deals to you. Just like Dino was talking about, he has one ready. And Dino, by the way, send it to me. I love to put it on our sheet for Tuesday. Or come on Tuesday and present it on there as well. Have your screen ready. Sure. Okay. Sure. But just like that, we have some deals like this. Now, here on this one specifically, we'll go very quickly on it. Lot 59 in Dublin, Georgia. It's inside of a very nice community park. The lot rent is 450. Rental rates is 650 plus. Resale value at around 18,000. The home is only being sold for 8,500 at this time, and it needs little to nothing, maybe a little bit of housekeeping. So here you go. These are the numbers you're trying to meet. If you're not scared to get a little dirty and want to get in and do a little bit more cleanup, which is nothing crazy, plumbing electrical, some of the biggest uh, cost in mobile homes, not an issue on this one here. Here's another one, lot 91, two bedroom, one bath, single wide, okay? Only being sold for 2,800 or best offer. So again, where do you find deals? Guys, they are everywhere. You need to look, you need to start using your mind and start putting those numbers together and do not be scared to negotiate. OK, if somebody asks you for 10,000 and your immediate response is to simply pop something back that's shorter than, oh, well, I'll offer 8,000. They're probably going to take it. But it does not mean that that is a good deal. You have to base the numbers and the deals based on the actual numbers. OK, so definitely join us on Tuesday for the Let's Do Deals uh, call, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. OK, let's see. And then next Saturday, of course, we'll pick another topic. If one of you wants to bring a deal on here, talk about it, break it down. Happy to have you on here as well. I did speak about guest speakers bringing them on. Some of those guest speakers are even my coaches. They have agreed a couple of them have to come on here and talk to you all. Every coach needs a coach. Every mentor needs a mentor. Otherwise, you just consider a teacher. Nothing against that, but I want to learn from somebody who's actually doing what they're talking about, right? All right. That is 1030. It does it so. Thank you for joining me on here. I actually got the drink on my coffee this time, so that's a plus as well. Hope you all did as well. 
look forward to seeing you all tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Coaching Series with me. Have a good day.